The title of this talk <clears throat> is Deltas and Epsilons. And it is a talk about teaching mathematics. Perhaps you think you're going to get some X's and Y's and maybe even a theta. There will be no X's and Y's and no thetas in this talk. <clears throat> Instead, it's a talk about deltas and epsilons. Let me explain. In mathematics, deltas and epsilons represent the little things, the little, little, tiny things. And in the teaching of mathematics and in life, I have noticed that the little things are the big things, the important things. You see, I am a teacher of mathematics. And teaching mathematics is the second biggest problem in the world. The biggest problem in the world is climate change or global warming. The second biggest problem is the teaching of mathematics and the learning of mathematics. Ask any family. I'm pretty sure that everybody in this room has experienced the strife, the pain, the agony, the arguments about test scores, quiz scores, etc., that affect every community, every family, every society, every nation in the world. So, in mathematics, we like to do something called analysis. We like to take a complicated problem and break it down to its parts and ask the question, why? Why is the teaching of mathematics such a problem? Well, it all boils down to one fundamental misunderstanding. I would call it the fundamental theorem of teaching mathematics. And that is that most mathematics teachers do not understand most mathematics students. You see, why did I become a mathematics teacher? It's a good question. Why would anybody become a mathematics teacher? I have memories from my childhood of happy experiences in a mathematics classroom. I remember the good scores, the teacher's attention, the smiley faces on my papers, uh, getting commended by the teachers, other kids coming up and asking me, how do I do this, how do I do this? Those are my memories of a mathematics classroom. And those are the memories of every mathematics teacher. That's why we chose to become mathematics teachers. That's why we chose to spend a significant portion of our adult lives in a mathematics classroom because we have happy memories. It's a happy place for us. Let me tell you a story. Recently, I was teaching a mathematics class and somebody came into the class, one boy came into the class, and he was late. He wasn't just a minute late, he was very, very late. He came in, he sat down next to another student, and he started asking the other student, what did I miss? So now, not only was that boy lost and confused, but he was also distracting the other student. Furthermore, there was a parallel conversation going on that was distracting the rest of us. So everybody in the classroom had their education interrupted by this boy who came late. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who was this boy? I'll tell you exactly who he was. He was the most important person in the room. Now, what do I mean? Many people will ask, 
Whose fault was it that this boy was late? And mathematics teachers will be quick to give you many answers. First of all, it was the boy himself. He doesn't have responsibility. He needs to improve his time management. Secondly, it was the boy's parents. Why have they not taught him to be respectful and manners? Thirdly, it was the school's management. There are no consequences for students who come late. What do all these excuses have in common? They are all excusing the mathematics teacher from his duty and his responsibility. Let me put another idea forward. It was my fault that the boy came late. Do you think it was the first time he came late? No. Do you think it was the second time he came late? No. In fact, he was late on the first day of class. He was only 30 seconds late, but he was late on the first day of class. And from the very beginning, I could have seen, and I should have seen, that this boy doesn't really want to be in this class that he has a negative attitude about mathematics and he does not feel a sense of belonging. So it's my responsibility as the teacher to reach out to those students who might not feel a sense of belonging. And oftentimes, we can sense who those students are from the very first day of class. They're the ones who come late, they're the ones who sit next to the door, they're the ones whose attention is drifting. And it is our responsibility as teachers to make them feel included, feel a sense of belonging, feel respected, feel valued. I could have gone to that boy and told him, hey, Please come on time. I look forward to seeing you in class. I want you to be here. How are you feeling? It's those little things that make a big difference in teaching mathematics. Now, I promised you that this would be a talk about mathematics, so I need to include a little bit of geometry. You see the traditional mathematics classroom. And of course, we all know that this is no longer thought of as a functional, useful way of teaching classes. Of course, the teacher traditionally stands at the front of the class next to the whiteboard and gives instruction. There will always be a couple of students labeled in blue who like me, when I was a child, always have the hand up in the air and always know the right answer, right? And there will always be several students who I have labeled in green who will be sitting there near the door, coming late and thinking, how do I get out of here, right? Now, when we teach teachers about how to teach mathematics, we now tell them this is not the correct geometry but we don't teach them why. You see, it's not really about geometry. It's not really about how the chairs and tables are organized. It's more about the attention between the human beings in the classroom. Look at the way the traditional classroom is organized. All the attention is focused towards the teacher towards the whiteboard, and through the students who have their hands in the air, who know the answers already. So we've set up in the classroom a hierarchy which reinforces the idea for the people in green that you are not valued. You are not part of this conversation. Your opinion is not important. Of course, the attention of the teacher is also 
very important. In this environment, who is the teacher paying attention to? The teacher's paying attention to the children at the front of the class who have raised their hands. And for the students sitting next to the door, where is their attention? Usually, towards the door, how can I get out of here? When is this class going to be over? Okay? So we have to think about how to reorganize not the classrooms, but the human relations within the classroom. That's what's really important. So now we tell the teachers, you know, the old rectangular array doesn't really work. What would be better would be to have group work. But again, we often don't explain why this is important. What's really important is not the structure of the tables. What's really important here is making every student in the classroom feel like he or she belongs. So now, the teacher can spend time and attention with the people who really need the attention. And not only can the teacher spend time and attention with those who really need attention, but also there will be much, many more conversations happening. And the child in blue, instead of showing the teacher that he already knows the answer or she already knows the answer, will have an opportunity to share with others and to develop this sense of belonging. It's all about a sense of belonging for every student in the class. Now, some people will say, how can you say those children in green are the most important people in the class? Isn't every learner important? And of course, that's true. And others will say, but actually, the most important person in the class is the teacher, the captain of the ship. And in a sense, that's true as well. But what is the objective of the class and the group? The objective is that every single person should have a productive, useful, helpful, positive classroom experience so that every single learner comes out of the class as a better mathematics student than she was or he was when we entered the class. So the objective is not about the individuals. The objective is about the group. And in order to make the group move forward, we need to be able to reach out as teachers to those individuals who might not feel a part of the group. That's why I say that they are the most important people in the class. Not that I'm ranking their value higher than others, but my ultimate objective is to get everybody in the class involved, to get everybody to feel a sense of safety, love, attention, caring, and community. So, I said this was a talk about teaching mathematics, but actually, it's not. It's a talk about life, because we're all parts of groups. We're all part of a family. We're all part of a classroom or a community or of a team that is given a task. And if you're part of a team that's given a task, the way to make the team work is to reach out to those in the team who need your love and support, who might not feel a sense of belonging. And by bringing those members into the team and making them feel belonging, that's how we make the team function. And that's the little thing that we can do to make a big impact. Thank you.